Hello, everybody. Very, very good afternoon. You guys could read my message. Very good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. You were able to read my message. So whoever has troubled me during my courses on an Academy Plus through a lot of doubts, for each doubt, five rupees, you clear the due first. Aaj. So clear karo, uske baad aage badenge. Khate mein bahut saare paise ho gaye. Kuch bhi chalega. Anything will work. Good morning, good morning. Good afternoon. People who have taken a short nap in the afternoon, for them, good morning. People who are doing like this way, for them also, very good morning. And uh, the people who are already learning and uh, being enthusiastic, very, very good afternoon. And uh, very, very, should I leave then? Yes, Udyan, now. Nek kaam mein deri nahi honi chahiye. दोस्त होते तो ऐसा बोलते पहली फुर्सत में निकल हेलो अमे वेरी वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम गुड आई एम गुड यू कैन सी आई एम इन अ वेरी लाइट मोड राइट नाउ हैप्पी हैप्पी Very, very good afternoon. आपकी खुशी का आज एग्जाम आने वाला है और मेरे स्टूडेंट्स काफी अच्छा करने वाले हैं इस बार तो आई एम हैप्पी की स्टूडेंट्स विल डू रियली गुड दिस ईयर सी आई एम हैप्पी दैट आई आई कुड गिव यू नॉलेज यू शुड बी हैप्पी दैट यू कुड गेन द नॉलेज some kind of learning you have that learning definitely will help you further rohit this is my name search on some social media just write on the google you will get some social media link over there you can send a message dar lag raha hai are dar sabko lagta hai mere ko bhi laga tha exam ke pehle but wahi to baat hai is dar ko hi to face karna hi padega na dar ke chakkar mein hum achhi cheeze chhod to nahi sakte सबको डर लग रहा है एवरीबडी इज लाइक दैट वे फ्रॉम इन साइड एवरीबडी इज स्केड यू आर नॉट द अलोन पर्सन यू आर नॉट सिंगल हियर यू आर नॉट अलोन हियर एवरीबडी इज वरीड टेंस ऑफकोर्स वॉट विल बी द रिजल्ट एवरीबडी इज यू नो एंशियस अबाउट इट बट देर आर पीपल हु आर मोर फोकस टूवर्ड्स सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन यू शुड बी लाइक दैट वे सर क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करने में टाइम लग रहा है प्रैक्टिस रिया जी प्रैक्टिस करेंगे तो टाइम कम होगा धीरे धीरे करके मैस में खाना खाते समय भी गेट ही दिमाग में चलता रहता है दैट इज व्हाट आई वांट फ्रॉम द वेरी केस यस यू नीड गेट एंड इट्स सक्सेस इन योर लाइफ डेफिनेटली अप टू अ रियली गुड लेवल बहुत तेज धकधक होता है धकधक होता है रे बाबा तो धकधक होने दो नर्व जो है थोड़ी सी काम डाउन हो जाएंगी once you will start solving two three questions in gate gate ke paper nahi de raha beta main theory ms ke question mein bahut galti hoti hai par numerical kam galat hote hain ronak uske liye aapki reading skills improve karni padegi jab aap question ko read karte ho thoda focused karke focus karke acche se read karo i organization ke kuch question ab nahi ban rahe hain to it is okay jitna banta hai utna hi theek hai last 5 days mein short notes revision karenge that's it एम एस क्यू के लिए टेंशन क्यों लेना टेंशन क्यों लेना ये बताओ मतलब टेंशन लेने से क्वेश्चन सॉल्व हो जाएगा टुडे मेनी पीपल केम उदयन ऑफ कोर्स शुड कम जस्ट बिकॉज इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन आई वाज एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट एटलीस्ट वन ट्वेंटी वन थर्टी स्टूडेंट्स विल बी लाइव हियर इन दिस क्लास क्लास कब से स्टार्ट है सर अभी बस पांच मिनट हुए हैं नमस्कार साहिल जी इफ यू विल टेक टेंशन विल यू बी एबल टू सॉल्व क्वेश्चन करेक्टली यस और नो 
यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व क्वेश्चन करेक्टली इन टेंशन भैया टेंशन लो जितना ले सकते हो ले लो पूरी भर की टेंशन ले लो मेरी सोसाइटी के बाहर बीबीएमपी ने गड्ढे खोद दिए हैं उसकी भी टेंशन तुम ही लो ऐसा नहीं होता है टेंशन विल यू नो रिड्यूस योर फोकस सो रादर देन टेकिंग टेंशन फोकस ऑन वन थिंग दैट लेट्स लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन करेक्टली तो मानव जी फिर एक काम करते हैं मेरे को आप परमानेंटली घर ही बिठा लेते हो तो ज्यादा अच्छा है मैं आ जाऊं आपके घर एग्जाम तक आपसे बातें करेंगे फिर आराम से वहीं खाएंगे पिएंगे खाने पीने रहने का इंतजाम कर दो इवन आई लिव इन बैंगलोर दैट्स रियली गुड बैंगलोर सिटी इज लाइक दैट वे कि इफ सम न्यू रोड हैज बीन कंस्ट्रक्टेड बीबीएमपी विल फील ओ नया रोड अब तो यही गड्ढा खोदेगा <laughs> I don't know what kind of uh, system these guys are having, but that is what the life. <laughs> okay. ये तो हर जगह ही जा ऐसा है सम दिल्ली उमेश हर जगह exactly ऐसे ही है. <laughs> Same thing happens everywhere. Anyway, चलो keep everything as aside and रात को सोने के वक्त formula चलता है अंदर अंदर. अनवेश का मैसेज आपको सबको सुन दिख रहा है अनवेश कहते हैं कि व्हेन वी स्लीप फॉर्मूलाज एंड टॉपिक्स आर रोटेटिंग इनसाइड माइंड नाउ लुक एट दिस दिस इज सीरियसली वेरी वेरी बिग सिचुएशन व्हिच वी विल हैव टू अवॉइड जस्ट बिफोर द गेट एग्जाम इफ यू रियली वांट टू हैव अ रियली गुड अटेम्प्ट रियली आई वुड सजेस्ट यू गाइज दैट इफ फोर्थ फेब इज योर एग्जाम थर्ड फेब को यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू स्टडी एट ऑल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अवॉइड दैट सिचुएशन दैट इन द इन द स्लीप यू नो फॉर्मूलाज एंड कंसेप्ट आर गेटिंग रोटेटेड एटसेट्रा यू डोंट स्टडी ऑन थर्ड फेब एट ऑल इफ योर माइंड सेज अप टू लंच ब्रेक वन पी एम हार्डली टू पी एम ऑन थर्ड फेब यू विल स्टॉप स्टडी दिस इज नॉट सेमेस्टर एग्जाम दिस इज like gate exam and in the gate exam gate exam you will have to be very very focused so listen one thing third feb no study after first half at max up to first half time kaise katega main hu na i will be taking your live sessions 2 to 4 hours to main bhi aapke sath hi rahunga i'll be taking special classes youtube classes For the plus members, I will be having a Zoom call. Zoom पे बात करेंगे First, you just stop mock on thirty first. Thirty first Jan last mock. After that, no mocks at all. So please remember why why I am saying that just I just because if you will keep your mind engaged into studies on third uh, third Feb also. next day in the nights you will not be able to sleep when you will not be able to sleep just before the gate exam properly next day you will not be as focused as you want to so you can go out re you can play badminton you can play something which engages your mind lightly i was playing cricket one day before gate exam yes that is true i was playing gate exam मनीष जी ये तो बहुत अच्छी बात है यू हैव एक्सटर्नल प्रैक्टिकल दैट इज अगेन अ वेरी गुड थिंग तत्वेश यू कैन राइट टू टू थ्री टेस्ट मोर अप टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मैक्सिम यू विल राइट एनी मॉक चलिए आई आई टेक योर क्वेश्चन लेटर ऑन फर्स्ट लेट्स हैव द डिस्कशन ऑफ दिस ओके सी ओ ए शॉर्ट नोट्स once we will go through all these uh, short notes and then uh, we will uh, if we will have time then definitely i'll take your questions later on i'll talk to you guys okay chaliye uh, this pdf you will be able to download as uh, normal pdf of any special class just after half an hour of this session or something you just come back on the same link once again and you will be able to uh, download this pdf on the page from the page so you can have the collection of this pdf 
चलिए सो विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम फर्स्ट बेसिक्स दीपक इट्स ओके daily is not same to same computer architecture provides you or includes instruction addressing mode data format and cpu design these four things are given in computer architecture opcode is necessary part in every instruction doesn't matter which type of instruction how many operands it is having but opcode is mandatory in the instruction format question even though if opcode information is not given then definitely opcode will be there only instruction is a binary combination which cpu can understand if we have system with variable length instruction then length of instruction is variable then fixed length opcode if length of instruction is fixed then opcode length will be variable this is the scenario which we have in our study fixed length instruction variable length opcode which we call as expanding opcode method also where different different instruction formats are having different different size of opcodes and we have solved lot of such kind of questions if one address instruction these many how many to address instruction supported like that way so many questions we have solved so expanding opcode is there how many of you know that program counter increments during the instruction fetch everybody knows right everybody knows when instruction fetch happens program counter incremented but if fixed length instruction is there pc increments in instruction fetch cycle yes but when the variable length instructions are there in a computer system then pc increment happen in decode just because cpu doesn't know exactly what should be the size of instruction so it just fetches the fixed size of code it decodes it and after that fetches remaining instruction and increments the pc that happens pc relative and base register mode are those addressing modes which are used for the branching and these two support relocation without any change in the code pc relative mode offset should be negative for backward jumping positive for forward jumping in execution phase of branch instruction value of pc updated with appropriate address so when there is a branch instruction if branch instruction is there then definitely program counter value will be updated by the target but in which phase execution phase of branch instruction yes anulin that is true pc relative mode is used for intra branch intra segment branching base register mode is used for inter segment branching among all the addressing modes these are the two addressing modes which are used for jumping remaining all addressing modes will be used for the operand fetching to get the operands okay shall next one computation exactly cycle time cycle time every time you calculate the cycle time cycle time is 1 by clock rate so is clock rate cycle time one instruction execution time is number of cycles needed to execute one instruction cpi into cycle time this works for all the type of computer system whether it is pipelined or non pipelined of course for pipelined cpu will be cpi will be very small for pipeline which is not having any hazard in the ideal conditions cpi is 1 if it's a non pipelining system cpi will be 4 5 6 7 something like that way okay cycle time if you multiply then one instruction execution time you can calculate this cpi is average calculation so you can call it as average instruction execution time also program execution time if n number of instructions are there then n into one instruction execution time then mips how do you calculate number of instructions executed divided by execution time into 10 to the power 6 why 10 to the power 6 just because this number is in million instruction per second number of instruction divided by execution time execution time if you use from here you can get a formula clock rate divided by cpi into 10 to the power 6 you remember these formulas and these formulas execution time can be written like this way also n number of instruction into cpi into rather than writing clock time or cycle time you can write divide by clock rate yeah 
two cpus having same instruction set can have different cpi and clock rate yes possible in vertical microprogrammed one signal can be and enabled from one group we know that in horizontal we have all the signals separate separate bits but in vertical we keep the signals into the groups so from one group only one signal can be active at a time maximum osk bhi mil jayenge bilkul uh, handwritten nahi milenge beta the vertical microprogram maximum signals can be enabled at once is equal to number of groups in vertical let's say all the signals are divided into five groups so maximum five signals can be active at a time that is the maximum this we call as you remember degree of parallelism parallelly how many number of signals can be active at a time so degree of parallelism we have this word degree of parallelism and this degree of parallelism is lesser in vertical very high in horizontal horizontal mein ye bahut zyada hota hai just because all signals can be active at a time theoretically in horizontal but here from vertical from one group one one group one as many as groups those many signals can be enabled or activated at a time speed up any time anywhere you calculate speed up or another word is there for speed up somebody remember performance gain speed up or performance gain is slower technique ka time divided by faster technique time anywhere you can use it for just comparing two techniques two different techniques or two machines of same technique two pipeline processors or one pipeline one non pipeline processor anywhere you just calculate speed up or performance gain through this formula throughput is nothing but how many number of operations per unit of time can be performed by a special machine or a method bandwidth data transferred per unit of time risk versus six sisk ka cpu comparison in the risk everything is less small simple but one thing is yes number of registers are more so less number of instructions fixed length instruction simple instruction limited addressing mode lesser addressing mode and simple also easy to implement using hardwired control unit here more instructions variable length instructions complex type of instructions supported more and complex addressing mode supported difficult through hardwired control unit that's why sisk that why it is called as sisk and it will be using the microprogrammed control unit mode in the risk in general one cycle per instruction taken multiple cycles per instruction here taken register to register arithmetic operations only means it supports only register based architecture the alu can take input only from register here no here alu will be generating the result for only register means the destination of alu operand can be destination can be register only but not here here can be memory more number of registers that is the only opposite thing in the risk which is not in the sisk for the pipeline processor risk is used more number of opcodes if we will have to implement pipelining then sisk type of no risk type of systems are used okay here we have two terms if we we have missed them one is uh, big endian another one is little endian for a data which is of larger size msb on smaller addresses first address side msb bits or msb bytes will be stored and little indian says that lsb side will be stored first on smaller addresses lsbs on smaller addresses I O organization. 
in the io organization in the asynchronous serial line if we want to calculate the efficiency of the line that is equal to character bits divided by total number of bits per character including other bits like start bit stop bit etc 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 in the program io how much time is needed time to check the status plus time to transfer the data how much time to check the status this depends on the internal speed of the io device and mostly it will be based on if we are transferring the data from io to cpu byte by byte then one byte ka status check if we are transferring the data word by word then one byte ka data transfer time it's very simple in the interrupt io how much time is needed total interrupt overhead time plus time to service the interrupt what is overhead sir when cpu receives the interrupt before the service after receiving and before the service of the interrupt some kind of time cpu needs for a lot of activities mainly cpu will do what the finding the address of the target which device to select first for the service like priority based service etc all those things cpu will do in that overhead time next cpu sends two types of information to dma controller before transfer yes those two informations are starting address and data count this particular line when i say cpu sends these two informations what is a starting address starting address is nothing but if dma controller will have to transfer the data between memory and io then in memory from which address the data transfer should start that is the starting address what is data count count of data in bytes or words if memory is byte addressable it will be in bytes if memory is word addressable it will be in words but but what is the data count how many number of bytes or words to be transferred between memory and io number data count register ka size if we have n number of bits then at a time 2 power n minus 1 number of data bytes or words can be transferred when it becomes zero gone data transfer stops this particular cpu sending two informations to dma controller this particular process is called as dma initialization through this two values after that dma transfers the data okay dma controller can generate addresses can send data uh, can send control signals for memory yes that is why it is called as a special purpose processor just because it can generate the address for memory access it can send the control signals to memory and io for read write okay cpu wait for more time in burst mode as compared to cycle stealing mode yes for a long time cpu wait happens in burst mode just because we transfer a lot of lot of data for longer time and uh, for uh, for the cycle stealing mode for a very short duration only cpu wait and again gets the cpu again gets the control of the buses is it sent before i to yes ame these two informations are sent to dma controller before giving the uh, control of the buses then control of the bus is given after that dma controller will transfer the data but before that dma controller should have these two things okay now no cpu wait or blocking in interleaving mode almost zero it is in interleaving mode we know that cpu gives the control of the buses to dma controller only when the the dma uh, the cpu does not need the buses so cpu will not wait for a very very long time or in fact will not wait at all for dma controller percentage of time cpu blocked in burst mode tx divided by tx plus ty into 100% what is tx uh, sorry ty ty divided by tx plus ty and what is tx tx is preparation time ty is transfer to memory time in the cycle stealing mode we will be having transfer time divided by preparation time into 100% only here downside we will not include transfer time in the cycle stealing mode but how do we calculate transfer time this transfer time will be dependent on the memory ka cycle 
if memory takes one cycle time let's say 4 nanoseconds so transfer time will be 4 nanoseconds in 4 nanoseconds a prepared data will be transferred to memory preparation time is dependent on cpu nahi io yes io ka internal speed this preparation time we will calculate through io ka internal speed sometimes it is directly given that uh, this particular disk is having this much operating speed based on that you can calculate preparation time if not given then sometime disk ka specification will be given in the question from disk specification we will calculate the preparation time overall we know that in the disk one complete track can be transferred in one rotation yes dma is faster mode for transferring the data between io and memory of course preparation time wo disk wala rpm se niklega it's not rpm it is wahan se niklega kitna data kitne time mein transfer hota hai uske liye hame calculation karni padegi haan ji so dma is faster of course for transferring the data between io and memory max data transfer during dma without cpu intervention equal to 2 power x minus 1 when x is bits in data count just now i have explained the same thing at a time only one of dma controller or cpu can use the buses either cpu will use the buses or dma controller will use the buses this was one of the line in gate 2021 actually one of the for given one of the option was like that way cpu and dma controller both simultaneously can use the system buses false during instruction execution dma transfer can be done but not the interrupt service yes of course during instruction execution means cpu will stop the instruction execution in between possible for giving the control of the buses to the dma controller possible it might possible that dma controller is using the buses and transferring the data between memory and io and at the same time cpu is also doing some kind of internal work for executing an instruction together possible yes but when cpu will need the buses cpu may stop itself but dma controller acknowledgement can be given in between the instruction execution that cpu has completed the fetch and given the control of the buses to the dma controller possible but interrupt service cannot be done for interrupt service cpu will have to complete the current instruction then cpu will have to push the address of the next instruction and other register values onto the stack as the status then cpu will take the jump to next next particular service service routine so interrupt service can be done once the current instruction completes program dio uh sorry io map dio and memory map dio difference in the memory map dio there can be memory wastage here no memory wastage in io map dio uh, memory map dio all memory instructions can be used for io access also here not possible separate separate instructions are there for io access and memory access here no separate address space for io in the io map dio they have their own address space their own addresses more instructions for io access possible in memory map dio in io map dio no very less number of io access instructions hardly two or four more addressing modes for io access here but here very less it should be less here more io devices can be connected here very less io devices can be connected here mbr may address se hoga program ka next status jo interrupt ke baad load hoga mbr mein nahi beta wo stack pe jaake load hota hai not mbr mein. mbr is a register register ke through wo pehle stack pe jaake store ho jayega in the main memory ram chalo badhte hain aage memory organization if we have a byte addressable memory directly we can write like this way 128 kilobyte 128k is number of addresses and byte is one particular cell size you can write like this way you can write like this way too in by default main memory is always byte addressable if something is not given in the memory size like this way 32k cross 2 memory so this too you will take as bits by default the memory capacity or memory unit is bits 
मेमोरी का एक्सेस रेट वन डिवाइड बाय साइकिल टाइम व्हाट इज मेमोरी साइकिल टाइम मेमोरी साइकिल टाइम इज दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम इन विच वन पर्टिकुलर एड्रेस रीड राइट हैपेंस ऑन वन सेल ऑफ मेन मेमोरी और एट अ वन एड्रेस ऑफ मेन मेमोरी हाउ मच टाइम इज नीडेड टू रीड और राइट दैट इज मेमोरी का साइकिल टाइम एक्सेस टाइम साइकिल टाइम ऑलमोस्ट सेम टू सेम थिंग ओके मेमोरी एक्सेस डिकोडर इफ वी नीड वी हैव अ मेमोरी लॉट ऑफ एड्रेसेस आर देयर how many addresses are there let's say number of addresses are b so a cross b decoder is needed a is the address size which is coming through address bus decoder will reach or will make us reach to each and every cell through a cross b decoder address size 2 power address size is the number of cells so if let's say you have memory same 128k so you will be having 17 bit address lines those address lines will be given to memory decoder memory address decoder will have 2 power 17 outputs each output will make us reach to one cell whatever this address 17 bit ka based on that i can reach to that specific address 17 cross 2 power 17 will be the size of memory address decoder if we have multiplication table for 2 n number of bit unsigned numbers then 2 power 2n into 2n bit ka multiplication table needed total results will be 2 power 2n each result size will be 2n if same we will have addition table of unsigned numbers n n bit each then total 2 power 2n results each result size will be n plus 1 for addition if we have multiple chips in memory system one decode decoder output select one entire horizontal arrangement if we have multiple chips like this way arranged in vertical or horizontal manner then in that way one output of the decoder for chip select will select complete horizontal arrangement so that all the bits of complete horizontal arrangement we can access for data then we have here another concept if required addresses are more then we use vertical arrangement horizontal arrangement used when the size data size per address required more and if both are required more addresses and data both then we go for hybrid arrangement where vertical and horizontal both arrangements are needed default storage unit bits cpu can initiate the memory request only when the memory is ready let's say cpu has initiated a memory request for write memory is writing on a specific cell let's say it is taking 10 nanosecond so after initialization of this operation cpu will have to wait for 10 nanosecond once memory will perform this write memory will send a signal to cpu signal named as ready once cpu receives that ready signal then only cpu can initiate another read or write operation for memory otherwise not until cpu receives that ready signal from memory cpu will not send any new request to memory associative memory which is called as content addressable memory also that memory is faster than sram costlier to just because there we have the searching through the content and faster searching just because of the parallel search then we have difference between sram dram sram implemented using flip flops capacitors here periodic refresh required in capacitors here no faster read write here slow read write just because of faster read write it is costly also used for cache it is less expensive than sram and used for main memories low idle power consumption but high operational power consumption in static low operational power consumption but high idle power consumption as compared to static one in dynamic जगमाल जी नहीं मिल सकते बेटा सारे सब्जेक्ट्स के ही लेना पड़ेंगे खाली दो के नहीं मिल पाएंगे ओके कैश ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लॉट्स ऑफ फॉर्मूलाज कैश इज इंप्लीमेंटेड बेस्ड ऑन लोकैलिटी ऑफ रेफरेंस वी ऑल नो दैट एवरी टाइम देर इज अ रीड मिस अ ब्लॉक इज ब्रॉट फ्रॉम मेन मेमोरी टू कैश मेमोरी दैट इज ट्रू वॉट हैपन्स विद द रिप्लेस्ड ब्लॉक इफ वी आर ब्रिंगिंग अ ब्लॉक फ्रॉम मेन मेमरी टू कैश मेमरी एंड इफ फ्रॉम द कैश मेमरी वील हैव टू रिप्लेस अ ब्लॉक उसका क्या करें the replaced block we will have to keep back into the main memory or not that depends on two types of policies in write through policy we directly replace a block 
if write back policy is there we will check out that do we have the dirty bit concept or not if write back policy no dirty bit ka concept then every time write back needed if write back policy dirty bit ka concept then replace a block if it is not dirty dirty bit is not set replace the block and copy it back write it back into the main memory if the dirty bit is set so these are the replacement policy and if write back needed or not needed it depends on write back or write through policies every time a write miss a block does not come into main memory for no write allocate if write allocate is there then yes a block is copied from main memory to cache memory no write allocate is the default policy with the write through cache write back cache has a write allocate policy okay so if we have write through policy in the write through policy write happens in main memory only and if it's a hit cache memory also in the write back policy write happens only in the cache memory always if cache miss occurs what we do we bring the missed block from main memory to cache memory first and then in the cache memory we perform the write operation as a write hit so remember in write back with write allocate we don't write into main memory at all no cpu will not perform write operation write operation happened only during the write backs simultaneous formula everybody knows this h into tcm 1 minus h into tmm hierarchical formula directly i have written it should be h into tm tcm plus 1 minus h into tcm plus tmm but you can make it shorter but in write back after updating cache memory we write in main memory after modifying right deepak we write only when the write back happens koi ek block ko jab aap main memory uh, koi ek block ko re replace karte ho cache memory se tabhi use write back karte ho main memory mein otherwise main memory mein update nahi karte modify nahi karte cache memory mein dirty content rehta hai main memory mein old content rehta hai if they are asking you to calculate the block access time block access time will be block size into tmm if block size is let's say 16 byte 16 times main memory ka access time t average will be equal to tcm if hit ratio becomes 100% write through cache t average write becomes tmm t average read is either this one or this one in general simultaneous access is used with the write through and uh, hierarchical access is used for write back in general by default so read ke liye you can use this simultaneous access if write through is used for write through t average is equal to percentage of read into t average read plus percentage of write into t average write effective hit rate in the write through cache is equal to read hit ratio into percentage of read why just because just because we have we have when there is a read and hit then only only cache memory is accessed for read miss of course main memory is accessed for write whether it is a hit or miss in the cache memory we will have to go to main memory always so that's why in the if, as a effective hit rate calculation in the write through cache which is how many percentage of read operations into read hit ratio write back we are having hit means only cache is access doesn't matter it is a read or write if it is a miss then we will go for main memory access this you can skip for sure not needed as of now just because it's not a very standard formula but if you want to remember or just want to go through that when there is a hit cache memory access time miss then from main memory block access time and block replacement time why just because dirty blocks will be replaced and write back so this is x into t block is the write back time needed now write back time is what x into t block what what is x x is dirty block percentage we will not write back every block into the main memory we will write only the dirty blocks so how many percentage of dirty block for those only hame write back ki zarurat lagegi otherwise nahi in the hierarchical access one extra cache memory access time added here 
पानी पी लिया जाए इन राइट थ्रू कैश इन मल्टी लेवल कैश देन इन राइट ऑपरेशन एल टू कैश एंड मेन मेमोरी बोथ अपडेटेड नवीन इट डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट टाइप ऑफ पॉलिसी यू आर हैविंग इंक्लूजन और एक्सक्लूजन इट डजेंट मैटर राइट थ्रू और राइट बैक इट इज ऑल अबाउट राइट इंक्लूजन और एक्सक्लूजन वेन देर इज अ मिस इन एल टू यू विल गो विथ वॉट इफ इट्स इट्स अ हिट इन एल वन इफ इट्स अ हिट इन एल वन right through policy you will update main memory and l1 not in l2 only l1 and main memory if it's a hit in l2 l2 and main memory will be updated simultaneously uncached memory and miss penalty please say uncached memory is nothing but main memory only miss penalty means when there is a miss time required to bring a block from main memory to cache memory is called as miss penalty ka time only one data sent to main memory for write in write through cache when there is a write through cache and write operation is needed from cpu to main memory one byte or word is sent so that that is written into the main memory that's it write through cache the block is replaced from cache directly we have already discussed this no write back nothing directly replace in write back cache the dirty blocks are only written back to main memory in write back cache if dirty bit is implemented then only dirty blocks are written back otherwise replaced directly cpu always generates main memory address even to access the cache also yes main memory ka address it may be physical address of main memory or it may be the logical address when we talk about operating system when we talk about operating system we will see tlb etc etc in translation at that time only right now we are having only one thing that is the cpu generates physical address for now tag tag is nothing but it is identification among all main memory block which one is currently present in the cache memory index right now which one is present that will be identified using the tag cache memory ka block number we calculate in the direct mapping using main memory ka block number modulus by number of blocks in cache in the direct mapping main memory address is divided into three parts tag cache memory ka block number offset this cache memory ka block number known as line number also and known as the index bits also in the direct mapping index bit is nothing but this how do you calculate byte offset based on block size this how many number of blocks in cache remaining this you can calculate this directly yes total main memory ka address minus log of cache memory ka size these two bits these two field bits will be log of cache memory size look at this tag in direct mapping main memory address size minus log of cache ka size byte offset is not used to check hit or miss this hit or miss ke liye only tag in cache memory are che checked these tag and cache memory block number this will give us a an index we will go to that index we will check out what tag is there is it the same as this one yes then hit if not then miss tag directory size in all the mapping will be same to same number of blocks in cache into tag plus extra bits what is extra bit extra bit is nothing but replacement bit it may be replacement bit it may be dirty bit it may be valid invalid bit valid invalid bit is there for all the types of cache all the type of cache every cache will have valid invalid bit for sure just because for the initialization purpose doesn't matter whatever it is whichever type whichever mapping etc etc if it is direct mapping we will not need the replacement bits just because in the direct mapping replacement uh, algorithms are not needed but set associative fully associative we may need extra bits as replacement bits also for the extra bits dirty bits are used only for the write back cache not for the write through cache but extra bits will always be there at least valid invalid bit one bit we will not have to take it by default until given in the question if not given in the question don't take it main memory block number addresses bits modulus by number of blocks in main memory na 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 galat hai if main memory block number you want to calculate that will be address 
in the decimal divided by size of block in decimal and its floor value if you want to calculate how many bits are there in main memory block number these many these two fields apart from byte offset will give you main memory ka block number this okay look at this for a given cache if block size and main memory size are fixed then tag is always same doesn't matter if the block size is changing or not even though for byte addressable and word addressable main memory also tag bit same to same these bits also same to same only offset will change for word addressable offset will be reduced by log of word size and main memory address will be also reduced only thing will change from word addressable to byte addressable main memory is main memory ka address reduced in word addressable and this much reduced by same number of bits these two will be same to same tag and cache memory ka block number same to same we have cache memory set number formula in the set associative mapping main memory block number modulus by number of sets in cache in the set associative mapping we divide the main memory address into three part tag set offset and byte offset this set offset depends on how many sets are there in cache and how do you calculate number of sets in cache number of blocks in cache divided by associativity we know that if we want to calculate tag in associative mapping we can calculate by main memory address minus these two fields collectively and these two fields collectively will be log of cache memory size minus log of k what is k k is k is associativity so this will be the formula after subtracting these two minus 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 plus index in set associative mapping also nothing but set offset this middle field is index in the fully associative mapping index becomes zero look at this it is not cache memory block number in first formula yahan pe ye ye i am talking about set offset na set associativity modulus by number of sets block number or io io line number yes block number or line number yes block number line number same to same line offset same to same bilkul sahi same to same okay in fully associative mapping we divide the main memory address into only two part tag and byte offset index bits are zero so all the bits in the middle field will go to the tag that's why tag is very big here fully associative mapping main memory ka address minus log of block size offset that's it in fully associative mapping tag c in direct mapping set associative mapping the size of tag is independent of the block size block size is whatever the size of tag depends on main memory ka address associativity and cache ka size here cache ka size only but here in the fully associative mapping yes tag size depends on the block size here in these two direct mapping and full set associative if block size is not given still we can calculate the tag size but here we cannot calculate the tag size the tag size is maximum for any mapping in the fully associative fully associative maximum tag size but minimum minimum in direct mapping index size minimum in fully which is zero and maximum in direct mapping fully tag used to map to main memory block yes of course tag har jagah same to same rehta hai tag is nothing but main memory block ka number here main memory block number itself is a tag here here main memory block number we divide into set of set and tag here also main memory block number we divide into tag and cache memory block number but here complete main memory block number itself is tag in fully associative mapping the tag is equal to main memory ka block number hardwares i don't think so these hardwares are coming nowadays but still we can quickly go through them in the direct mapping we need mux for 
for tag selection how many number equal to tag bits if tag bit 16 16 mux are needed size of mux for tag selection number of blocks is to one number of comparators only one size of comparator tag bit size if tag bit 17 bit 17 bit comparator needed for kv set associative mapping number of mux required equal to k into tag bits size of mux for tag selection if we are selecting the tag for multiplexer size number of inputs is equal to on in each multiplexer is number of sets is to one will be the size of mux number of comparators k comparators needed each comparator will compare tag bits so size of comparators will be equal to tag bit size and one or gate is also needed at the end one and that or gate will equal to k input or gate for four way set associative four input or gate just because four comparators will give four output wherever we are having matching if any of what or any of these will have a true answer or gate will give me true answer for hit if not any of them are not matching means it's a miss fully associative mapping hardware's comparators needed and or gate needed here comparator says number of blocks how many number of comparators equal to number of blocks of cache that is too much big number and that's why it is very very costly the costliest it is the costliest how number of comparators equal to number of blocks in cache size of comparator tag bits one or or gate very very big or gate is needed number of blocks input number of blocks input or gate if number of blocks are 2 power 10 then 2 power 10 input or gate is needed to check out wherever we are having hit or not hit latency in the direct mapping how much time needed to have a hit mux delay plus comparator delay in the set associative mapping mux delay plus comparator delay then or gate delay in fully associative map mapping mux is not needed so comparator delay plus or gate delay direct mapping no replacement policy needed just because on one index we are having only one block so we will replace that block directly without checking any condition etc but in the fully associative and the set associative mapping we will need the replacement policy in the fully associative mapping we don't have any conflict type of miss what is conflict type of miss conflict type of miss occurs when we say among entire cache memory one complete set is full on that set we have replaced one block brought new block and that replaced block got again uh, an access request repeatedly second time access repeated access of a block but that block we could not keep into the cache memory why just because my current block got full or current set got full but other sets are empty if other sets are empty it is called as conflict conflict miss this conflict miss will not be a conflict miss if i could have this mapping as larger one if let's say four way set associative mapping we will reduce it to or we will increase it to eight way it might possible that conflict miss will not be there just because on the same set we can we could keep eight blocks so that block which got replaced could be in the main memory or could be in the cache memory in fully associative no conflict miss yes just because in fully associative only single set is there so there is no any policy or there is no any possibility that this set is full but other sets are empty or at least one other set is empty Aisa koi condition nahi hoga. If this set is full means entire cache memory is full. So we will have only either capacity miss or of course cold miss. To reduce the conflict miss, increasing the associative may help, associativity may help. To reduce cold misses, increasing block size may help. To reduce capacity misses, increasing cache size can help. Total cold miss is equal to number of blocks in main memory. If main memory is having 16 blocks, CPU can have these 16 block ka unique reference one by one by one. Means you'll be having 16 cold miss maximum. For multi-level cache system, we will be having simultaneous ka formula and hierarchical ka formula. Simultaneous H1 into T1. When there is a miss on the first level, then we will go inside. Inside there are two possibility, either hit on second level or miss say hit on second level also only second level access time required when there is a miss on first level miss on second level also main memory access time required this is the hierarchical formula t1 plus when there is a miss on h1 t2 required 
plus when there is a miss on H2 also TMM required. You know that cold and capacity are same. No different beta. Cold for the first time access of a block. Capacity means when the cache memory is full, capacity miss occurs for repeated access. Okay, I have given you one thing. Hit on the first level called as access probability of first level. When there is a miss on the first level into hit on the second level, this is access probability of the second level. And when there is a miss on the first level and miss on the second level too, this is access probability of the second level. So sometimes rather than giving you a you know, H1 or H2 separately, they will give you the access possibility or probability. Level 1 access probability this much, level 2 access probability this much, level 3 access probability this much. So access probability is nothing but for first one H1, second level 1 minus H1 into H2. So you can multiply this here. This is access probability of first level or second level. And then this is multiplication of these two access probability of third level. So events, this is given, multiply in the second thing here, multiply this TMM in the multiplication of this. So open this bracket, you will be having these access probabilities covered. Disk capacity equal to twice of number of platers, it gives you number of surfaces into tracks per surface. It will give you total number of tracks in entire disk into sectors per the entire disk into one sector capacity just because every sector capacity is same to same. Sector is the smallest addressable unit of the disk which can be read or written at once. So if you will have to read or write on disk at a time, one time, one sector completely will be accessed. Disk ka access time, total seek time, rotational latency, one sector transfer time plus additional delay if anything given in the question. Average rotational latency is one rotation time divided by two. How do you calculate one rotation time? Sorry, from the rotational speed given in the question. 6000 RPM or uh, some kind of 300 rotations per second like that way it will be given, right? One sector transfer time is equal to one rotation time divided by number of sectors per track. Why this formula? Just because we know that in one rotation, one complete track can be transferred. So for one sector, one rotation time divided by sec track size in the sectors. Sequentially stored n sectors, we will have to transfer, then we will need only transfer time for n sectors, rest seek time, rotational latency, only single, single time, n times sector ka transfer time. If randomly stored n sectors to be transferred, then n times we will need all these things just because for each sectors to be reached, seek time and rotational latency needed. Then for disk, we had the formulas of uh, addressing. We know the addressing CHS, cylinder number, surface number, and sector number. If any sector is given, and we will have to calculate the address, separate formulas are there. If address is given, we need to calculate this address belong to which sector. We will have the formula like this way, C into number of sectors per cylinder, plus H into number of sectors per track, plus, in, plus S, not into, this is plus S. What is sectors per cylinder? N, 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 C. This we denote by N, T, number of sectors per track. This number of sectors per track will be given mostly in the question for number of sectors per cylinder. That will be number of sectors per cylinder. Let me write it like that way. Number of sectors per cylinder will be equal to number of sectors per track into number of surfaces total. Number of surfaces, you know, two twice of platers. Few questions not mentioned clearly, sequential or random. Those questions definitely will be from test series, not the gate. So you don't worry about it. In gate, definitely there will be if we will have to calculate reverse that sector number this is given we'll have to calculate the address 
so sector number divided by sectors per cylinder you will get c of course the integer part of this for h sector number given in the question modulus by sectors per cylinder nc this one and after that modulus divided by sectors per track integer part will give you h and again for this division also take the modulus sector number modulus by number of sectors per cylinder modulus by number of sectors per track you will get s these are the formulas directly address to cylinder uh, sector and sector to address you can easily calculate pipelining pipelining is useful when the processing is applied over multiple inputs pipeline time is k plus n minus 1 into tp k is number of segments and number of instructions or operations performed tp is cycle ka time how do you calculate tp tp calculate karne ke tarike batao one either directly given in the question second through the clock rate third maximum segment delay fourth maximum segment delay plus register delay these are the ways to calculate tp okay chali <clears throat> speed up non pipeline system speed up is ntn divided by k plus n minus 1 into tp as compared to non pipeline system in the ideal condition tn by tp when there is no any there is no any hazard then ideal condition k minus 1 signal ignored ignored to fill the pipe that's why k minus 1 ignored ntn divided by ntp cpi becomes 1 in the ideal cases tp is maximum segment delay plus register delay tn sum of the segment delays what are the other ways to calculate tn tn calculate karne ke aur kon kon se way hain through the clock rate cpi into clock rate sum of the segments or either directly given in the question directly kabhi kabhi question mein directly given hota hai cpi into clock clock time cycle time yes cpi into cycle time some of the segment delay or maybe directly given in the question sometimes latency is after how much time new input is given to the machine in the pipeline latency is tp non pipeline latency is tn throughput of the pipeline in ideal conditions 1 by tp buffer delay will come here for tn never buffer delay tn mein kabhi nahi aata non pipeline mein buffer ki zarurat nahi hoti delayed load it is the solution software solution for data dependency it is provided by compiler what compiler does in this after the instruction which is generating the result some independent or no operation instructions it adds and dependent instruction will be delayed so dependent instructions ka operand fetch will be delayed by some number of cycles so that the instruction which is generating the out output or operand that instruction can do its right back before the dependent instruction can do its operand fetch operand forwarding is a hardware solution by data dependency are ye kya hai and it is a hardware solution and in alu to alu data dependency operand forwarding provide zero stall cycles for memory op for memory dependency or to memory dependency it may add some extra cycles cpi average when you calculate one plus stall frequency into stall cycles how many percentage of instructions generating stall into stall and execution time cpi average into tp cpi average will be one without any without any hazard for hazard it will be little more stall because of the branch is equal to i minus 1 if ith stage is giving you the result of the branch instruction now whichever type of branch instruction it is conditional or unconditional taken branch or not taken until otherwise given we will take the stall for each type of branch instruction you guys are going to write the exam this time right 29th january ko AIMT is bar pakka likhna. There is a question. I I'll give you a heads up. There is a question from pipeline. You will see the question and you will remember me immediately. Mere ko pakka yaad karoge. Aap log question dekhte ki yes sir Vishwadeep sir ne hi banana pakka. You see the question. You will remember me hundred percent. I don't know if you will be able to solve it correctly or not. 
doesn't matter for 100% you will remember me and after paper you will definitely send a message to me sir yaad aayi pakka aayi aayi aapki rancho this time i am making questions of uh, coa and os this time i have given the questions for 29th one question from pipeline you will see you will remember me and you can remember your uh, mom also mom ka mom also sab nani mummy nadi dadi sab yaad aayenge aapko question ek question dekh ke pakka yaad aayegi <laughs> okay then even branch is not taken then two stalls are needed due to branch instruction until otherwise given in the question if question is given then only otherwise not उन्हें बोल दीजिए टाइप सही से करें कोई बात नहीं टाइप तो करेंगे तुमको पढ़ने में भी मजा आएगा आई विल रीचेक इट रिजल्ट ऑफ ब्रांच कंडीशन इवेल्युएशन अवेलेबल आफ्टर एग्जीक्यूशन फेज ऑफ ब्रांच इंस्ट्रक्शन एग्जीक्यूशन फेज गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन देन टेक इट अदरवाइज एग्जीक्यूशन फेज गिव यू द ब्रांच का रिजल्ट ऑपरेंट फॉरवर्डिंग एंड रजिस्टर रीनेमिंग कैन नॉट सॉल्व द मेमरी एक्सेस डिपेंडेंसी फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन वी रिप्रेजेंट द नंबर इन एस ई एम exponent is biased mantissa is normalized if we have explicit normalization we have number in mantissa represented zero point mantissa in the mantissa first bit should be one but in implicit one one point mantissa point before point only one digit one bit after point all the remaining instead each stage taking one clock given two clock stall will be calculated as i minus 2 deepak ji ये देखना पड़ेगा कि ये सारी की सारी साइकिल में अगर दो सारी सारी स्टेजेस में दो 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 साइकिल लग रही हैं तो डेफिनेटली साइकिल नंबर ऑफ साइकिल्स बिल्कुल व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन प्रीवियस इंस्ट्रक्शन इज लोड डिपेंड्स कि लोड कब होता है इफ लोड हैपेंस इन एग्जीक्यूशन आफ्टर एग्जीक्यूशन यू कैन डू दरेंट फेच इफ लोड हैपेंस इन द राइट बैक then uh, after right back you can do the operand fetch it will be mentioned in the question in gate exam mm, doesn't matter this you will skip directly you will go for the floating point representation of i triple e single precision double precision two different types of representation single precision 32 bit this is 64 bit here 32 bits divided into 1 for sign 8 for exponent 23 for mantissa here 1 for sign 11 for exponent mantissa 52 for exponent 8 bits 2 power 7 minus 1 127 is bias here 2 power 10 minus 1000 23 as bias value we will use if exponent here or here anywhere all zeros we are storing or all ones we are storing those will represent special numbers so value implicitly normalized value if we have here then the formula is this 1 point mantissa into 2 power capital e minus bias for denormalized number we will not store the exponent as it is completely we will store directly we will have 2 power minus 126 or 2 power minus 1022 directly no bias will be used here in denormalized value let's have the table very simple if all zeros mantissa and exponent both zero if exponent is all ones but mantis size all zeros then it is plus minus infinity based on sign but exponent is all ones and mantis size not equal to all zero that's a not a number ji ha denormalized mein zero point mantis hoga bilkul sahi kaha aapne yes for denormalized number we will have exponent all zeros mantissa not equal to all zero if mantissa is some non zero value and exponent all zeros it is called as denormalized number denormalized is nothing but a number we wanted to normalize but we could not just because it were very very small number so we have normalized it to it to minus 126 and after that left it as it is so we could not normalize that's why we will have zero point mantissa stored normal number will have all the exponent either not equals to 0 or not equals to all ones exponent should be non zero non all ones but mantissa can be all zero con can be all ones depends for normalized number minimum value very smallest minimum value if you want to have which is positive minimum value 
then we can have sine zero exponent one just because it cannot accept zero for normalized number mantis are all zeros that is the smallest value near to the zero which is normalized one largest value if you will have sign one s becomes minus negative ka largest normalized value normalized maximum value should be exponent should be all ones no ek akri mein zero chahiye maximum value can be all ones but last zero maximum value of mantis can be all one 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 for denormalized number exponent should be zeros mantisa can be 0000 last me one and mantisa will be 111111 for maximum this pdf will be available after half an hour i guess so you come back on this link again and you will be able to download this so that for next 4 5 days you can keep going through all these small small short notes these are definitely needed for sure how to calculate miss rate when miss penalty is given miss rate from miss penalty nahi no, we cannot calculate shilpa for for that i will have other information needed miss rate nahi nikal sakte udyan for doubts i will take a question in two or three days before this week i will take a question a specific session only for doubts i have kept another class for operating system uh, important questions on youtube so i'll be available for that particular class after some time aisa tha to ek kaam karte hain shilpa ji ek do din dijiye maybe mostly on friday we will have a class special class only for your doubts one more ds short notes and os short notes classes tomorrow 11:15 and 12:30 one announcement people who are not on an academy plus want to join an academy plus up to 28th of january we have offer of 30% saving use this code and take the subscription asap before 28th of january okay people who are coming first time on an academy platform there is an opportunity for you to write good messages for your favorite educators you will have your dedication hats open when you watch more and more lectures on an academy platform these dedication hats to be given to your favorite educator give it रिवाइस इंडिया ओएस की क्लास तो नहीं हो पाएगी सजल जी बट एक पूरा मैराथन मंडे को ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम का होगा जिसमें पूरा ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम रिवाइज करेंगे ओके चलिए थैंक यू सो मच गाइस फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस सेशन टुमारो अगेन वी विल मीट 11:15 फॉर द रिवीजन ऑफ डेटा स्ट्रक्चर टिल देन हैव अ ग्रेट डे थैंक यू सो मच मैराथन बिल्कुल यूट्यूब पे आएगा मैराथन आएगा तीस इकतीस एक ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सीओ ए डेटा स्ट्रक्चर इन दैट सीक्वेंस वन डे वन सब्जेक्ट डन एंड डस्टेड एंटायर सिलेबस कवर्ड इन क्विक सक्सेशन ओके चलिए थैंक यू सो मच गाइस बाबा